Hello everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm David. I'm a graduate from the Sense program where I graduated in 2016. That was about uh, the time when in Germany the law on the digitalization on the energy transition got in effect. And that opened a window of opportunity for me to start as a freelance consultant um, working for um, uh, utilities in South Germany, a corporation of utilities, to follow some new regulated uh, movements in. Uh... Ah, yes, thank you. I was a bit <laughs> Sorry. Good. Um, yeah, in uh, smart metering, smart grid, and beyond. Critical infrastructure are assets that are essential for the functioning of society and of economy. A smart grid and smart meters, therefore, are an important part of critical infrastructure. But what is a smart meter? Most of you probably know, smart meter is a utility meter that has computation and communication capabilities added. So with those, you can add, improve your uh, operations, your services, with the gathered data. I guess that was the wrong button, okay. So Germany is going a special way with these by EU regulated smart meter rollout. And this talk is why, how, and what is in for you guys. So the goals of the, smart, the European Union's uh, regulation on smart meter rollout were first to support the, go uh, the energy efficiency goals of the European Union and that is by activating the customers around the product of uh, yeah, basic utilities, by creating the awareness around the products, for example, electricity, making it marketable, and creating an interaction, market-based interaction between the product, electricity or gas, and uh, the supply system behind, the infrastructure behind what is known as demand response to flexible prices for customer activation. A, th a second part, main part of the goals of the smart meter regu uh, regulation by the European Union was the improvement or the sustaining of the secure grid operation while we are moving, for example, for the case of Germany, from 200 units of generation to many million of units of generation. So with the data of the smart meters, you can get greater grid insight and therefore um, yeah, control and operate your system secure and safe and, for example, um, curtail in emergency situations, curtail oversupply of renewable energy sources if you need so. So to support these goals, they regulated 80% of electricity meters should be smart meters by 2020, which is quite soon, but if cost effective. That's an important addition to that goal. So to find out what is cost effective, each country of the European Union had to do a cost-benefit analysis on this smart meter rollout goal. And uh, in 2014, the European Commission made a benchmark or published a benchmark of the results of all these individual cost-benefit analysis which were extremely diverse. So you can see, like, we're not going to go in detail in the, in, into this map, but you can see very different results per country. And that is the average cost for a smart metering system was 200 euros for, Europe, for the European uh, cost benefit analysis. But ranging from 77 euro in Malta to 766 euros in the Czech Republic. And the reason for that is it was individual cost-benefit analysis with different starting conditions in each country, do you have, which systems do you have in place or what do you have to build up. You have different local labor costs, you have different geographical configuration, if you have very spread population or if you're very centered in, in, uh, in, in metropoles like in France, for example, compared to Germany. And you have another factor as additional features. So let's say you have the basic smart metering functions that you want to use for these goals, 
uh, you can add more and more functionalities to do more services around these uh, systems. And it has been shown in this uh, cost benefit, uh, in, in the benchmark of the European Commission, that the additional features didn't really contribute significantly, significantly to the cost of the overall system. While if you add functionalities, you can gain more benefits out of that, out of that smart metering system. And other factors such as if you're assuming a lifetime of eight years compared to 20 years, which are like the two extremes in, in, the, in the European countries, or what interest rates you use and general stuff. That's just for gas, it looks a bit uh, worse, but we're not looking at gas today, it's just the next step, maybe in next year. Um, so, based on this uh, benchmark, the, uh, the European Commission came up with some recommendations for smart re metering systems, what should they be capable of doing? And one, most, one of the most important one was technical and commercial interoperability. That means you're following standards while you're really building this, uh, designing the technical guidelines for these systems to allow, uh, to avoid vendor lock-in by some more powerful established companies, allow and therefore also allow a commercial involvement of the, of the systems around, of the services around the system. So, uh, yeah. You create a market around some standardized, uh, some standardized product and allow it to evolve over time and not just build it once, 20 years later replace it with another system. So that's, that was one of the main recommendations. And then aligned with the goals of the digital single market for privacy, data privacy and data security, they were very high um, in, in requirements on, on the system. And from the energy perspective, a bit closer to the energy perspective, and to the energy uh, related to the energy efficiency guideline that I mentioned earlier, these systems should allow demand response as a, mi a minimum functionality, and other energy services to be established and developed around the uh, like smart metering system or architecture. With these together, the system should support retail markets and therefore deliver all the benefits of having such a complex system to the consumers as well as to the energy system as a public utility in the end. So, taking the recommendations of the European Commission as well as cost-benefit analysis of the German case into account, the German Ministry of um, Security and Information, uh, Security Information Technology, came up with a system architecture that is, sorry, where did I jump now? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> so, this one I wanted, yes. This is, uh, they came up with a smart metering system architecture that is centered around the so-called smart meter gateway. The smart meter gateway is not a meter itself, but it's more like a, a secure router Sorry for the techies, it's bad generalization, but let's say it's a secure router that connects your meters, whatever it is, gas, electricity, water, appliances in your home, your smart fridge, your, your PV panel, etc., any components, as well as actors in the outside world. Outside world, anywhere, a service company, your, your DSO, whatever. So, why this gateway? This gateway is trusted by design and it's administrated by a trusted party, a secured and trusted party. And that, it, uh, that's the comment about the router, it's not just the router, it has some intelligence inside, it has some distributed intelligence to allow pre-processing of events and data in the, in the installation space and then make, your own, make local decisions on interacting with the, these different um, actors in around this co central component. So that's just one of the examples at the moment in the market. Uh, it's only one certified to be, to be allowed at the moment. But uh, this is how it looks like, the, this German secure gateway. So that's a component in the architecture, but what are the business cases? Okay, 
clearly smart metering and everything you can do around the smart metering, demand response and uh, grid inside and so on. For smart grids, control control your PV panels, control your batteries, control have a local energy management system that interacts with an aggregator on the other side. Or emergency shutdowns for uh, the DSO, as well as additional services. And that is what we will focus now a little bit more on, because the additional focus is, of course, much wider topic that can be implemented through this through this uh, system for any anything that has comparable or similar requirements to security and to data privacy. So let's say we have this house or building and we have a smart meter gateway installed. We have two parties living there, they have their individual meters, one has an electricity contract with that company and the other one with that supplier. That so far, the smart metering case, maybe they have a, um, maybe they have a charger in their carport or a smart fridge connected for demand response. But uh, what else can you do? You could connect um, home security appliances. You can yeah, go as far as get a service provider that doesn't sell you natural gas for your heater, but that sells you room temperature and operates the equipment in your house. Or, and that's an interesting topic, also from the co for your colleagues from uh, Digital Health, let's, let's say e-health. Let's look at e-health, especially at elderly home care. Old people, at some point, are not able to to live unassisted because of our human nature of decay. So they need some kind of a, a special attention while in a modern family there's no, there's no one there to take care full time of them. Usually they move into an elderly care, uh, care home at some point, which is very hard for them because they have to leave their, their trusted environment, their home. So what if we can extend the time that they can stand stay at home um, by giving them the assistance remotely through a, a trusted system, not just an internet connected uh, uh, IoT uh, device, but through a trusted system that can um, handle the specially sensitive data, give you the required security for that, and allow you, for example, to, let's say we have a, a small additional system that we connect to the smart meter gateway and that can detect patterns, behavior patterns by some machine intelligence to see that maybe your grandma left the oven open endangering the whole house and herself to burn down and that before that even happens you can detect the pattern and, and make a check call or make a check call or send an alarm to a caretaker that maybe takes care of the whole city for example. Send them there and uh, leave your, your grandma or grandpa a few years longer at home and they will be happy and you will be happy and you save some money because elderly care homes are expensive. So just a small uh, trip to the, to the e-health department to, sit, to, to show um, how potentially powerful this architecture is and what's, what is one of the goals and what is talked about in Germany at the moment. But why should a utility that are already have hard times, as we heard from the previous speakers, move into such a like foreign, foreign terrain for them. Why would they uh, start now doing services about e-health when they have a hard time even connecting a, a charge point for our EV electric vehicle? And that answer is the the law on the transition, the law on the digitalization of the energy transition. That means. That law is liberalizing the metering point operation in Germany. That means the conventional metering point operators were the, the distribution system operators. And they're now getting into, in the next two years, it's starting now, or sorry, last year, but they're getting into competition with um, pre-market um, service operators who are jumping in and offering like metering point services 
based on this architecture that you have to use, you're required to use it from a certain consumption level. And that brings these 1,000 around, not just, not really 1,000, just under 1,000 DSOs in competition with each other, but also with new service providers based on that architecture that is financed by a maximum that you can charge per consumption group. So if, you're con if your consumer consumes 10,000 kilowatt hours per year, there's a limit that you can charge him for meter point operation. And then there's still the danger that these, ser these cheap service providers that are maybe have an office in Berlin and they pick the cherries of the, the, the profitable um, consumers all over Germany, so you have to compete with them with, some, with something. And that means, let's say you have 200 euros for a metering, metering system that, you, uh, that I mentioned from the cost-benefit analysis, and now you have to try to do as much with the system to make it profitable. That means, in the end, when the competition really starts, they all need to do, to do added services on this architecture. Otherwise, the customers most likely will just go to someone who does metering point operation for free because he can sell you e-health services as, as, your main, as his main uh, product. So, a lot of people nervous and a lot of added value services needed. So, they, so the utilities can remain in their natural business of meter point operation, which of course in their interest. But they have to bring these added value services in. They have to not develop e-health. They don't have to uh, go into complex new products with every new innovation that comes up. But the one thing they have to do, and that is especially the case for the, for the let's say, not top five utilities in Germany, because they are big, and they, as you can hear from other spe speakers, they do these things and they have awesome uh, ideas and projects already. But from the many hundred other DSOs, they also have to come up with the service. They don't have the uh, resources and they don't have the capabilities to do that on their own. So they have to collaborate. So they need startups, pro innovation projects, and any, anything that can, can help them provide these new and innovative services based on this architecture to remain in business. So, DSOs need to collaborate, and that is your chance with the special way of German smart metering. If you have any questions around this, please ask me now or contact me on the, the Grid app, Grid app, Grid app. <laughs>